Hi everyone, my name is Taryn Mitten. Today I'm going to be reporting on the educational giant William C. Bagley, the father of essentialism. And without further ado, I'd like to get into a history of his life because I think it's important. He was born in 1876 in Detroit, Michigan, where he grew up farming and learning to farm. So after he graduated high school, he moved on to an agricultural college in Michigan, actually. And after studying there, he learned, he found out that he didn't have the land or the money to make it as a farmer, and so he kind of switched career paths. He started teaching at a small schoolhouse in Rapid River, Michigan, and after a couple of years there, he decided he really liked education, and he wanted to pursue it more. And so he moved to study at the universities of Chicago and Wisconsin. Uh, afterwards, he went and uh, job shadowed Mr. Edward Bradford Titchener at Cornell. So after getting an education in, ed in education, he uh, started getting administrative jobs, like a principal at an elementary school, and even went to the University of Illinois for a while to be a professor. And during this time, he wrote many journals and got published a couple of times for uh, education philosophies. People were, were starting to notice his work in essentialism. And one of his first book, actually, in 1905, is called The Educative Process. And it, really goes into essentialism. And so that was his theory. And actually he went to the University of Illinois and started the teaching the School of Education there. And before it was even built all the way, he left. He went to more administrative jobs and wrote more books and ended up at the Teachers College in um, Columbia in around like 1917 and so there he was joined among a large staff of other educational giants at the time like uh john dewey and uh edward l thorndike william Hurd kilpatrick and george d strayer and these educational giants and him would just end up in debates over their philosophies all the time and he during this time, the, the philosophies of education actually um, progressed a lot because of the, these debates. And so it's a good thing that he was there because uh, the theories wouldn't be what they are today without all those educational giants getting together and um, really mulling through all of the different theories and different ways to educate. And that I think that's a really cool aspect of his life that I didn't know about before. So, um, he was considered the father of essentialism. And so what essentialism is, is a back to basics type theory of education where students should be learning a foundation of curriculum before they move on to specialize and what that means is that a student to be considered intellectual should know a certain like standard of curriculum and be able to contribute to society with that curriculum before they move on to a more central um, study into a field. So, I mean, I definitely see parallels of this in our education today because um, all throughout elementary, middle school, and high school, I've learned like foundations and of the same classes like math, English, history, and science. And then now I'm, I can see that everyone with their majors moves into a more closed off, um, more narrowed not narrowed, but a uh, specialized curriculum. And I think it's cool that you can see that in our s studies today. Um, so experts in essentialism would say that it's the most popularly used 
theory of education today. It actually is where the standardized tests all come from, basically. So when you take the SATs and the ACTs, you can thank William C. Bagley because he uh, founded the theory. And though it's been revised and um, definitely changed over the years, that's how it came to be. Um, today, we can see that it's important to teach these uh, core curriculums so that students um, can go throughout their lives and feel confident in certain subjects while they're learning others. It's good to be well-rounded, and I know that more than, I, more than I like to admit because I sometimes don't like certain subjects, but it is a good skill, and I, in conclusion, would just like to say that it was cool to study these um, educational giants, and I hope that I can uh, apply it in my teaching someday. Maybe not in the same way, maybe not, maybe in the same way, but yeah, that's my presentation. Thank you guys, and that is all.